the Juhu Beach was my place of uh, entertainment during childhood days. And I do have very, very clear images of the white men, you know, chanting the Hare Krishna uh, during late 70s and they used to crisscross the Juhu beach and they would be chanting Hare Krishna and then they would sometimes sit down on the beach and sell books. Uh, those very early impressions and I used to wonder what beautiful people and why are they so happy. Uh, but I was also happy at that time because uh, because uh, by the way, how much time do I have? Okay, I'll try that. So I'll not tell you my reasons of happiness. Uh, so Sri Gopinath Ji, uh, the first time that I visited uh, a, a temple in of Iskon was at Radha Ras Bihari Juhu because my neighbor, Mr. Bal Krishna, Bal Krishna Prabhu, he, he was the accountant of Prabhupada. So he, used to, so he used to be very insistent that we used to, we should go there. So he did take us as kids for the first Janmashmi in the tin, uh, in the, in the tin thing. And my mother and my father did visit Prabhupada on two occasions and heard their uh, lectures, heard him speak uh, on the terrace, but that was about it and uh, uh, then there was this whole thing at Juhu that the temple is bugged, it is CIA, stay away. So I went away to Nagpur between 80s and 84, that far. Uh, but Sri Gopinath Ji, I must confess that I find Shri Shri Radha Ras Bihari, whom I, f whom I saw first, as the cutest, as the cutest around. But you must also know that since the last more than 25 years, you are the most attractive around because I drive about 20 kilometers to come and I don't know what is so attractive about you, uh, but you must be definitely the most attractive. Uh, That's for Gopinath Ji, so please clap louder that he is the most attractive. And and then came along this admission in MBA in 1984 and contact with one Sanjeev Maheshwari, another very, very attractive devotee, for those of you who have seen him. Um, can't miss his radiance around. So, I will want to tell Govind Prabhu that there were some benefits of those days where the brahmacharis and the grihasthas were like, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> There were some benefits and I'll tell you the benefit and you'll be very happy that this happened. Uh, January of 1985, there was, uh, I was a big fan of Rasaraj Prabhu because he was into artificial intelligence. I had none, so I wanted some. So <laughs> he was, I knew there, there was some source around this possibility. Uh, so he used to preach heavy, heavy. And then, because I was an MBA student, I will not name this person for those of you, you know, who know, will know who I'm referring to. He was from IIT and IIM Calcutta. Fully shaved up, saffron, you know him. Uh, and uh, he preached to me on that day in January 1985 at Sahadev Prabhu's place. A lot of us MBA students were there in that uh, meeting. And he said, you must join the Brahmachari Ashram. And I must say that I was quite convinced that I must join the Brahmachari Ashram. So he said, listen, but there'll be a lot of objections, etc. And then he preached to me extremely heavy stuff, which I'll relate to you in a minute. 
so I went and he said you come over to the Ras Bihari temple I went there I, I went home and I told my mother that I am going to the temple because I want to attend the Mangalarti tomorrow and she said you know there was back and forth why don't go to the temple you can go from here itself and um, this discussion went on for some time I said I want to go to the temple I want to shift to the temple because it'll be easier and uh, this brahmachari had told me that there'll be objection there'll be serious objection so there's one counter to it that you must use so I asked my mother how do I know that you are my real mother how do I know that you're my biological mother oh gosh this was like <laughs> the works <laughs> then there was of course my father had permitted he said you may go but my mother objected she gave me she she put one condition you want to become brahmachari yeah I want to go to the temple and stay there so she said you do one thing you sleep here itself and tomorrow morning you go and I slept at 2 30 a.m. and that tomorrow morning never came and you'll be happy to know that I'm not in the brahmachari ashram <laughs> benefits of harsh preaching <laughs> of course in 1986 I had the tightest slap of my life uh, I was on top of the world uh, just completed my MBA got a great job in Voltas uh, those days about 10,000 rupees a month it was a lot of money my son doesn't consider it as any amount now <laughs> but uh, that's probably pizza money for him uh, on top of the world and I lost my father on a gloomy August morning a very very tight slap and I wanted to know why me so I went to Ras Bihari ji for for nearly a year year and a half I used to go there just asking this one question why me why me why me and I realized all my friends especially one very dear friend uh, his name was Dilip at that time and he was very he was taking great care of me uh, he used to come virtually every day for a month after my father passed away and he was working for a company at that time uh, called DS Prabhudas and little did I know that this person with whom if I were ever going to be speaking about the Bhagavad Gita or whatever he would smash me to pieces he would cut me to pieces if I ever spoke about the Bhagavad Gita or anything to, pertaining to philosophy with him it would be chop 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 and I would lose to him generally he had powerful logic and uh, he used to come and his and he was working in this company called DS Prabhudas then he went over to Calcutta he got a phenomenal bank job but I believe this DS Prabhudas was very very prophetic in his life because he actually became Prabhudas <laughs> he became the Das of so many Prabhus and his name his given name was Devamrita Das or Devamrita Prabhu now his holiness Bhakti Rasamrit Maharaj and he is he and Sachidanand Prabhu <coughs> are the ones who kept uh, us in contact it around uh, 88 uh, Devamrit Prabhu uh, got me to meet uh, uh, his holiness uh, Radhanath Maharaj here itself down in the temple I don't remember having seen you Radha Gopinathji at that time um, and then uh, Bhakti Rasamit Maharaj would constantly keep in touch he would uh, he was not Maharaj at that time uh, but I had decided that if I surrender to anybody and listen to anyone it would be him and little did I know about the initiation system in ISKCON so me and my wife had decided that we'll take you know we'll we'll keep him as our guru we will yeah the mentality was we'll keep him as our guru you know it was not accept him uh, but <laughs> somehow <laughs> yeah that was the mentality at that time but, and, and he was in very close touch uh, and uh, I used to love sporting a beard and it would be especially uh, trimmed in a Middle Eastern way so that 
despite being a Marwadi, I would look like a Muslim. Uh, you know, somehow I had this. Uh, and Vrindavan Maharaj, he was Maharaj. And one fine day he said, what is this beard? You, know, you, you should shave it off. And I was extremely upset about the whole thing. And I went to Devamit Prabhu and I said, what is this? You know, why can't I have a beard and come here? And he took me about, he took about one hour to, <coughs> to explain. And the next day, like, you didn't have your beard and you didn't have your hair, but I shaved off my beard and came here. Um, then on, I met so many friends out here, so many friends. Uh, but the first friend to meet was His Grace Radha Gopinath Prabhu, somehow. In 1990, Bhakti Rasamit Maharaj told me that we should do a multimedia show for the Janmashtami. And um, I didn't know whom to approach, so I approached him and he came over to my house and we did some bhajans and, and we recorded uh, a, a speech. And do you remember by any chance? Okay, I'll tell you, I'll recap your memory further. There was this library here and the person standing right there, Srivas Thakur Prabhu, used to also help with the library. And uh, uh, we recorded the whole multimedia show on a, slide pro on a slide projector. There used to be nothing beyond that at uh, those days. Uh, with his voice and some music and your voiceover as well. And then came the point where we had to do the whole recording in Hindi also. And everything went haywire because his Hindi and Srivas Thakur Prabhu's Hindi was lesser said the better. So those were my first interactions uh, then uh, but somehow I could not relate to Sachidanand. He was, he was too simple for my liking and then came along this mysterious Prabhu called Raghunath Prabhu and he showed me what beauty in, in Krishna consciousness means. <laughs> I mean how can you really be uh, mysterious out here as well. Of course, uh, during the early part, uh, we had Sahadev Prabhu who used to take a lot of care of all of us. And he was like mother. He, he gave us that kind of uh, motherly affection and love. Uh, that's the way I relate to him even now. But there was a fatherly strictness available also to us. <laughs> and that was from Mahaprabhu Prabhu. <laughs> And we had named him, we meaning me and Sri Gaurang Prabhu had named him Alabama Jones. <laughs> Those days green card was like a big thing and he used to tell me, you know, I have a green card also and there's possibility you can also go there and get a green card if you are in Hare Krishna. So, wow, you know, <laughs> green card. But I never wanted a green card. But we called him Alabama Jones because there was a particular book that he was promoting. And the Jones was for that. And that book was Joys of No Sex. <laughs> Jones, that's why we said stay away from him. You know? So then of course 1992, uh, we kept in touch with Radhanath Maharaj. But 1992 is when again we re-decided that there seems to be a person whom we can accept as guru. And really fell in love with him. Uh, the entire family was, he used to really adore him. Again, we realized that he can't give us initiation or you know, that was not possible at that time. Um, so we waited and then the day he gave initiations to around 250 people, we also got our initiations. Um, then came about 1995, uh, where I think probably it was the first pan ISKCON kind of project that we got, and it was the Back to Godhead uh, project, uh, where I came in touch with a lot of devotees and a lot of. Um, I made uh, that is your attractiveness, Sri Shirada Gopinathji, that at least for me and why I drive down those 20 kilometers up and down, is that I have, and I think I can boast about this, I have at least about 200 or more friends out here 
with whom I can come and nudge, I can come and poke them, I can come and hug them, I can, you know, and they're not going to ask me, hey, haven't seen you for a long time. You know, they would say, so happy to see you. And that is your great attraction, that <clears throat> not only do I have friends who are in this ashram, but even in this great ashram out here, um, and all those in the nine, between the 90s and 95, um, we, of course, there was Radha Gopinath Prabhu, but we saw someone develop as the Radha Gopinath Bhakta Samaj Das. And that was none other than His Grace Krishna Chandra Prabhu, who was ably supported by his good wife, Radha Priya Mataji. They were a superb example for all of us. Amazing. Of course, he, it's his lineage. Right from Arvind Bhai, you know, uh, I, that's his father. He used to probably, I don't know if he advertised for his Mafatlad cloth ever, because during my MBA days, I used to see only the Bhagavad Gita shlokas, half page Times of India. And in my MBA, I used to wonder who can this person be? He's got a product to advertise, but he's always advertising half page Bhagavad Gita Rath out there. And then, of course, there was. Sri Nathji and Sri Nathji, always Virajman. And little, I think, little did I ever realize up until probably uh, the two Vaishnav gentlemen who used to be, whose busts used to be just outside Tinkerbell, that Sri Nathji Prabhu and his family as trustees and uh, Arvind Bhai as trustees had offered this amazing place in South Bombay, you know, they had opened their hearts to everyone, they had opened their, uh, their, this place to everyone and for everyone to come congregate. So around 1995, uh, Krishna Chandra Prabhu and Sri Nachi Prabhu, they supported the BTG project. A lot many devotees came there, some, uh, so it's now nearly two decades, uh, 20 years, and uh, some very, very Long, long-standing devotees around, um, some not even with us uh, now, like Trivikram Prabhu, and uh, but there is still Manjari Mataji who has served her this project for 20 years. So I can see uh, our Prabhuji here. He was a Hindi editor. <coughs> Pandurang Prabhu, Sundaru Prabhu, Sham Kumar Prabhu, and a couple of naughty ones also passed through BTG like Hari Valla Prabhu and Gopinath Prabhu, also. <laughs> So, um, Hari Priya Mataji, uh, so many such. Uh, and then came more friends, more friends in terms of, uh, you know, Vishwaru Prabhu, Dwarkadish Prabhu, Sri Dama Prabhu. I may miss a few. And Murlidhar Prabhu was, of course, you know, through his flash. If probably now we had a flash, it would be at least the size of Mumbai Mirror, you know, because of the way the congregation has grown and but those days flash was flash was a newsletter by the way a single page newsletter printed front back especially interesting was um, you know who's done what during the week a message from radha gopin uh, radhanath maharaj and birthdays and wedding anniversaries so that was a great um, it was a great bond creating thing i will not uh, go beyond 1995 or beyond there but uh, uh, these are my remembrances of those days. I was not a very early, uh, early person out here. There were Srinachi Prabhu and others, and Rohini Nandan Prabhu, etc., who are like right from the 80s. Uh, so, uh, Radha Gopinath Prabhu, since I remained in the Grihastha Ashram, and I'm still staying with my mother, so sometimes I feel I am the real Mike Kalal. <laughs> and given the mic in my hand, you're going to have a tough time getting it back. <laughs> you have left your mic, so you know, I can claim as real Mike Kalal. <laughs> I'll end here because I think I've exceeded my more than 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Shri Radha Gopinath Bhagavan Ki. <laughs> Thank you.
सबके सब लाल हैं इधर थैंक यू युधिष्ठिर प्रभु फॉर शेयरिंग योर थॉट्स बिफोर वी हैव द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ भजन टू गोपीनाथ आई वॉज जस्ट थिंकिंग एज यू वर स्पीकिंग हाउ गोपीनाथ हैज इन द 27 सेवन ईयर्स दैट ही हैज टूड हियर अट्रैक्टेड द हार्ट्स ऑफ लिटरली थाउजेंड्स इन्यूमरेबल पीपल ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड प्रॉबली थ्रू द मीडिया रिसेंटली देर वॉज ए गुरुकुल बॉय फ्रॉम द ऑर्फनेज हु केम जस्ट थ्री डेज बैक एंड ही केम ही वॉज फ्रॉम एटी थ्री टू एटी नाइन सो ही जस्ट काइंड ऑफ लेफ्ट वेन आई जॉइन and he was telling that uh, my upar aaya after 89 years come for the first time yahan kisi ko nahi pehchana and bas gopinath ji ke paas gaya keval unko pehchana main wahi the fir jaate jaate aapko dekha isliye main piche aaya and i was thinking some some here who knows you may have come last life and <laughs> and may have you know others may not recognize after few years we come back nobody may recognize here but he's going to recognize you know your past your present and even your future amazing the deity is such a wonderful friend that you can pour out your heart without being judged anyone can come without being any discrimination and the amazing thing is he can hear you out very difficult in this world to get people who can hear all of you i mean all, completely everything that you pour out and still not get fried out so to say is always there and i have seen many devotees just come and and pour out their heart and just stand there for long time and when they turn back and go they are very very happy so that is gopinath for you let's offer the third and the last section of gopinath prayers and then we will have another presentation